the Hutchinson House was built just barely 20 years out of slavery. For more than a century, this house has stood the test of time. For decades, it was known by locals as the Hutchinson House. But this weathered rock of architecture has more to offer than a colloquial name. Built in 1885 by Henry Hutchison, who had been born into slavery in 1860, the Hutchison House is a two-story home with bedrooms upstairs, a family room, fireplace, and kitchen downstairs, and an outhouse a few yards away. It sits on a 10-acre plot of land on Edisto Island, which is about 42 miles southwest of Charleston, South Carolina. According to the Smithsonian, Edisto Island, known for its abundance of Sea Island cotton, was home to 10,000 enslaved African Americans between 1808 and 1860. And, it, and it's sort of like a monument or a symbol of economic empowerment and a spirit of resilience uh, to the newly freed enslaved people of the Low Country. Greg Estevez is the great great grandson of Henry Hutchison and a historian. He says Henry Hutchison built the house as a wedding gift to his wife at a time when newly freed black people were trying to gain their footing. Hutchison was among several African Americans in the region to acquire land. Several people who was able to acquire land, and why was that important? Is because for the first time, you know, uh, African Americans can be uh, independent for the first time, and they can farm their own land and, and do things, you know, to uh, affect their, their own uh, livelihood. Estevez credits his late grandmother, Myrtle Hutchison Estevez, for keeping the house in family hands for so long. He says her lasting wish was to turn the house into a museum. Her vision was to have the Hutchison House become an educational uh, museum or some kind of um, venue where people can come and learn about the history of African Americans uh, and, and their various struggles on Edisto Island. But time proved to be a major opponent for the house, which fell into a state of decay in the late 20th century. The house has been photographed and painted and just cherished by people on this island and who have been visiting or living here in its deteriorated state for you know, 30 years. John Giroux is the executive director of the Edisto Island Open Land Trust. He was like many people on Edisto Island who had heard of the house but didn't know of its rich history. It was just so compelling visually and probably more than that. I mean, that house exudes some serious energy. And so I pulled over and it was just one of those moments where, you know, it's kind of an aha moment where you just see it and go, there is something amazing about that structure. I don't know what it is, but there's just something special about that. So I started asking questions and that's when I started hearing, you know, oh, of course, that's the Hutchison house. Myrtle Hutchison owned the house, but when she passed away in 2014 at 97 years old, the house was then passed down to Greg Estevez's sister. It was in jeopardy of being lost outside of the family. And so that what I mean by that is, you know, it was potentially going to be sold outside of the family by the one of the last people to inherit it. And so, but that person was generous enough to give us time to um, figure out what we might do with it. In 2016, the Edisto Island Open Land Trust raised $100,000 to buy the house and the land around it. Upon learning of Myrtle Hutchison's lasting wish to turn the house into a museum, that became the goal. But among the Hutchison family, at first, there was a bit of apprehension. We felt some type of way, the family did. But then we realized that the land trust shared the same vision as our uh, grandmother and matriarch. In 2017, the beginnings of Myrtle Hutchison's dream began to take shape. The land trust started restoration of the house, first with a canopy to protect the decaying exterior from the elements. While the wood was rotting in some areas, most of the inside remained largely intact. At this point, we're probably close to a half a million dollars into, but that includes the acquisition of the property, you know, creating a parking area, um, and then doing the stabilization that's happened so far. So, we're, and I like to think of it maybe in simple terms, we're probably about a half a million in and we're about halfway through with the project. So we've got 
close to 500,000 left to go, but 170 of that came from the National Park Service. So we've got just under $300,000 probably that we need to raise to completely finish the project. The Edisto Island Open Land Trust has raised money through donations and grants, including from the National Park Service and the African American Cultural Heritage Action Fund. One of the major takeaways both Estevez and Giroux hope to share is the power of land ownership among African Americans and the lasting impact it had in the years following the slavery era up to modern times. This, this may need to be a site that tells, tells a hard story and, and gets a little bit more aggressive about trying to help make some of the change that's needed in the country right now. So I don't know. That's that's for me to say and for yeah. my board and Greg would, and the family to would, chime in. Cavante, I was going to say, John is becoming more woke. <laughs> yeah, you betcha. <laughs> Built by the hands of a once enslaved man to now telling the story of African Americans on Edisto Island and beyond. Both Estevez and Giroux believe the Hutchinson House has even more stories tucked away in its nooks and crannies, just waiting to be shared with the world. Giroux hopes the restoration of the house is completed and is open to the public by next spring. Reporting for Atlanta Black Star, I'm Cavante Smalls.